I'm going to make a bold prediction here. I'm going to assume that 50% of the people who see this video title pop up are going to think to themselves, oh, he must really love this show, which means half of those people are going to think that, um, oh my God, he's one of us. He loves it. He gets it. He loves this show. All right. Or they're going to be like, oh my God, he loves the show. He's a fucking insult pedophile. Oh my God, cancel him. Or the other half of the spectrum is going to be people who think, wait a minute, he's going to say he hates this show. Oh my God, fuck him. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand why this show is incredible. Or half of those people are then going to be like, one of us, he's one of us, he's one of us. Fuck this horrible show. That, in my opinion, is truly the ultimate impact of Mushoku Tensei. This show is so beyond in the eyes of the general anime viewing public. It is so beyond good or bad, positive or negative, quality or junk. Mushoku Tensei, as an anime, has become more about the mania around it than anyone's ability to judge the show for what it is. So therefore, there's only one man on the internet dumb enough to try and give some sort of like discussion that is neither really driven by emotion or passion for the series. Because I'll be honest with y'all, this is the most 50-50 I've ever been on anything. There is, in my opinion, a lot to appreciate and like about Mushoku Tensei, but yeah, there is a lot of horrible disgustingness. I'll be honest, the note season two ends on is probably the most personally pissed off I've been at this show. But I do think it is worth trying to put a video out there about just what the show is. And now, obviously, I cannot rid myself of bias. It is an opinion. Uh, but I'm going to try and not really think of it in terms of ultimate masterpiece or gross incel trash. We are just going to talk about this show for what it is, the good, the bad, and kind of like the, how I think the general public has kind of skewed this show. So let's start off with some positive points, which there's a lot of good ones here. I will not pussyfoot around this. I am sorry, haters of this show, but I got to give credit where credit is due. When Mushoku Tensei puts in the effort, and genuinely has an idea of what it wants to do and what story it wants to tell, it is really fucking strong. From show not being afraid to show Rudius as the ultimate loser bum degenerate who is then able to get a second chance and always is aware of what that means and what he has been allowed to do um, to just the world building. I usually say I can't stand isekai worlds because they're just generic and presented to us in an interesting way. This is the exception. I think the world building in this show is fascinating. The way different cultures are shown, the way history of the world is presented to us, the way you see it develop. The world building is excellent. The depictions of magic are incredible in this show. Like all of those aspects, hell, it looks gorgeous. The score is great. There is so much done right here. And I think a lot of it, it's not just the technical stuff because any anime can spend a lot of money for good visuals and still be shit. Cough, cough, JJK. Um, <laughs> I always got to throw that stab in there. But I think like it, it, there's more to it. This is a series with some genuinely great moments. Rather, it's Roxy bringing Rudius out to the, re to the world for the first time. Uh, rather, it's, Rudius and his developing relationship with Eris or him in the second season, slight spoilers. I assume y'all kind of have an idea where this show goes, but rather it's him trying to then build a life with Sylphie or trying to connect with his sister or then trying to save his mother and the impact that has on his relationship with his father. This show really is capable of incredible drama. It can handle these things excellently. In particular, have to give a shout out to the episode about Rudius and Norn. The fact that this episode is mostly set in one room, the characters 
don't really exchange dialogue, but it is some of the most fucking compelling sibling drama I think I've ever seen in anime. There is no way around it. This series does have an emotional core to it that when is allowed to flourish can be excellent and a true example of what isekai can and should be when it is at its best. If you told me that these were the reasons you liked Mushoku Tensei and that's why this series continued on for years, like I think maybe a decade or so before it got that anime adaptation, I believe you. There were moments I thought this could be a contender for anime of the year. I'll be honest, it really could. However, and this is where we got to get rough and I got to get a little mean. I'm sorry, but the truth is everything that people complain about with Mushoku Tensei is 100% true. I know there's that whole narrative online fans of the show are trying to create that people who hate this show just hate it because they've never actually seen it and they want to get on the hate bandwagon and that's all there is to it. No. Mushoku Tensei has a lot of problems. And as much as all of those good points I just mentioned are, because this show can be that good, it makes the bad moments so infuriatingly insufferable. That's kind of the remaining taste of this show that's in my mouth. It's the bad shit. And so now, yeah, we're going to go into it. First and foremost, the elephant of the room, Rudius himself. As much as I said it is a positive that Rudius can be as low and awful as he is at the start of the show and then grow from there, the show has a bad habit of oftentimes leaning into that incel power fantasy that ruins most other isekais. There are a lot of moments that's just Rudius being rewarded with the all the beautiful women you can want and you're super powerful and you're super popular and you're handsome and all of that. That's there. It's all there. And it is made 100% worse by the fact that the decision was made for Rudius to be portrayed by two different voice actors. I understand why they did this because it gives it a unique feel and it kind of keeps that idea that Rudius's past is always sort of with him, but it does at the end of the day mean that when Rudius is lusting after girls who are physically the same age as him, I'm hearing a grown man talking about wanting to groom little girls to be his ideal woman. And I'm sorry. That is creepy. <laughs> it's gross, and I don't like it. I mean, when you literally have scenes where, like, Rudius is trying to force himself on, a, like, a 12-year-old who he knows is uncomfortable with this, yeah, that's what sticks out. Even if the moment where he realizes he did wrong is done well, I'm still hearing that grown man being like, damn, I almost got to tap that, yeah, boy. It's creepy. I'm sorry. It just is also i feel like and maybe this is just me i think having two voice actors play the same character like this creates a bit of a disconnect i watched both dub and sub everyone does the best they can but i always feel this disconnect between what rudius is thinking and what he's doing and considering how much of this show relies on him and his thought process and his problem solving abilities that's a problem it it just kind of is and again, this desire to keep the nerd power fantasy going, I think is what then pollutes the entire series and what leads to a lot of the problems. It's not so much an issue in season one, because in season one, you have Eris there to always kind of like call him out on his bullshit. But then when you get to season two and he gets that fucking high school, the most fucking infuriatingly dumb high school I've ever seen everyone's just worshiping him. They're just talking about how cool he is and how great he is. And every character is just part of his posse. I don't see how that furthers Rudius's growth or development. And I also don't see how it builds on the world because 
We're just in a school and they're just telling Rudy is how great he is. And then when you see him just be the creepy pervert and just kind of repeatedly get rewarded for it, how am I supposed to interpret that? I'm sorry, but the interpretation is that Rudius is rewarded for just doing whatever the fuck he wants, and what he wants is to be a gross, douchey pervert. On top of that, the whole, like, e erectile dysfunction subplot, I think, falls completely flat because they never really go into... Rudius's emotional and mental state and how that influenced everything. It's like he just gets to the school, it's brought up every two episodes, and the rest of the time is just, like, shenanigans and stuff. Yeah, you learn stuff about, like, why the mass teleportation happened. You learn about another isekai person. That stuff is good. That is really well done. But it just feels like just a thing that's happening in just what is ultimately a pointless narrative about just being like, what if you got to do high school again? And it was fucking awesome. See, see, you're not the problem. The world around you is the problem. The world of Isekai will give you everything you fucking want. So keep buying in our fucking franchise. We can keep allowing you to pretend you're Rudeus and imagining getting that fucking perfect life. God, I fucking hate Isekai and I hate this shit so much. All right. On top of that, you just sort of have just other kind of problems. The show does move a little too slow, especially in that second season. And yeah, like, it kind of all comes to a head in that big finale. And I gotta get into some spoilers, but the finale feels like it's designed to just give Rudeus everything he ever wanted. It is literally a finale giving him a get-out-of-jail-free card for doing probably the douchiest fucking awful thing he's done and he's basically told it's all right he's rewarded for it and everyone is okay with it when i don't believe any one of these characters would be that's the other problem the desire to fit into the incel power fantasy has resulted in every character and every plot line has to suffer for it that's a problem and when i see so many fucking other reviewers and critics who just don't care about this they just go along with it. oh it's so good to see me i mean rudius get his fucking reward i'm just sitting here just like fuck off fuck off show i'm sorry as much as i liked everything i liked about this show yeah this shit ruins the whole goddamn thing for me like it's just i don't even know where things are going and i don't even know if i want to continue I literally every day I'm like, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't fucking know. We'll know in like two years when the next season comes out. Or I don't even fucking know at this point. But yeah, I should probably get on to the last little subject. This video is way too fucking long. But the last little thing I just want to talk about is Mushoku Tensei's influence on the anime world and how that has influenced our ability to judge the show. And even how it's a bit, uh, affected the way I judge the show. So, yeah, as I'm sure everyone here knows, I've alluded to it several times, Mushoku Tensei seems to either be the most beloved anime of all time that is misunderstood by people who don't want to give it a chance, or it is the most disgusting, degenerate, awful shit to ever come out of Japan. Neither of these things, I think, are ultimately true, and I think are the end result of a growing anime culture that is more defined by how you make an anime you like define your entire personality and online presence rather than how you actually watch and interpret and discuss things. I feel this problem a lot with battle shonens. I feel it a lot with isekai. Just this sort of idea that a show cannot just have its positives and negatives and you move on. It has to encapsulate just everything you're feeling about everything all the time. So I don't feel like there's a lot of discussion with this show of like, this is good, this is bad. I feel like it's either all extreme from the lovers and all extreme from the haters. And there is no middle ground about it. And it makes talking about this show very hard because it affects how I judge the show. It affects how everyone judges the show. And as for me, yeah, it kind of annoys me when I see like people who just have that like blind love of it. And it does kind of make me want to dislike the show more than I do. Don't get me wrong, I fucking despise a lot of this show. 
but it does spoil a lot of what I like about it because I just feel like what I think is fine, someone else is treating like the greatest thing ever and their excuse to be douchey to people and un and unfairly call out people who just have opinions they don't like. So yeah, that is Mushoku Tensei. What are my final thoughts about it? I don't fucking know. It's an anime that exists and has developed a sort of life of its own. And the only thing I can recommend to you as a reviewer is just go in and take out from it what you get out of it. I am not here to tell you you are wrong for liking it. I'm not here to tell you you are right for hating it. It is a show that exists and it is a show that has developed a very strong opinion on it. Um, where do you fall? I don't know. Just please make that opinion your own. But all in all, give me your thoughts about this show in a way that's intelligent. I'm really tired of the JJK comments being like, bruh, it's just great and you just don't understand. Give me an actual, actually tell me what you like and don't like. I won't judge you for it unless you get weird about the underage girls. But yeah, uh, as always, click to like, click to subscribe and join me next time when we kind of move on to something hopefully not as infuriating.